Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're doing this charcoal drawing of a tiger. It should be fun, so let's get to it. I'm going to start with a graphite pencil to do a bit of sketching and after that I'll proceed with charcoal. Most of it is going to be charcoal as usual. The size of the paper is 9 times 12 inches. This time with a vertical orientation. And I'm going to have a bit of background, um, kind of blurry, how to focus background. So it's another wildlife drawing, which I haven't done in a while now, but uh, I wanted to do a drawing of a tiger, but a more detailed, larger one, like a portrait. And this one is going to be pretty detailed. I'm going to explain my approach because I don't think these animals that have stripes or spots need to be very complex to draw. Now, I'm just going to stop for a second to explain what I'm doing. I'm using a pointed stick here, and I'm just going to create some indentations where the whiskers will be. So we have some around the eyebrows, and then I I'm going to have some around the nose, so also some lighter hairs here in the ears. So I create these indentations with a pointed stick and when I go over them with charcoal uh, they end up showing as white lines. It's a nice quick way of drawing white lines without, without actually putting in too much effort because sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to clean up charcoal with an eraser and it can be even more difficult to create a clean edge when you're doing that. Uh, the reason why I created those lines or indentations once I did the sketch was because I needed to know where to put them first. And now I'm proceeding with the drawing process using a charcoal pencil. So I'm going to be using these woodless charcoal pencils. I mostly use a medium one for most of the drawing process, but I also use a soft one for some of the darker areas. And I zoomed in a little bit to where I'm working around the eye and I'm going to get back to what I was saying about how you can simplify the drawing process with these complex looking animals that have spots or stripes. One of the things I like to do, and I know that some artists won't always approve of this approach, but I like to draw these stripes, I like, I like to put, the, put in these darker areas first, and then I shade a little bit, um, I shade some of those shadow areas, and then I refine the texture once that is done. But I find that once I put in these stripes, it really helps me a lot to get things going, as it were. It really makes the whole process a lot faster than if I were to <coughs> uh, choose a slightly different approach, for example, to try to shade the, the larger areas first and then draw the details. Normally, that's what people recommend. They recommend that um, you should uh, shade the larger areas, establish larger contrast between lighter and darker areas first. And that way you can show the volume of an object, or in this case an animal. But I like to put in these darker areas first and that really helps me with the drawing process. I'm going to do a bit of shading on the background. And I'm doing this with a piece of vine charcoal. Uh, but I also have to work a little bit around uh, around the around the head here where there will be some lighter hairs and one of the things that I'm going to try to avoid here is having areas of lighter value around my subject that almost look like the main subject is glowing so like a halo effect now that's what you want to avoid normally you want to try to create uh, clean edges to value or uh, stronger contrast between the main subject and the background. 
If that's not always the case, that's fine. There has to be some variation. Uh, but contrast is really beneficial when you want your subject to stand out from the background. One of the advantages of vine charcoal is that it, uh, it, it can be moved around easily and it allows you to create smooth transitions and almost like painterly effects. But you can always combine it with compressed charcoal to create some darker areas. So I want to create some variation in terms of value in the background. I want some slightly darker areas, darker than this. And to create those, I just sharpened one of my pencils and used the charcoal powder. And I'm spreading that around with a brush. And I'm going to be taking away or adding value as needed. But I'm going to try to make sure that my main subject has the lightest lights and the lightest lights and the darkest darks. So I'm working on the tiger's eye, or the eye of the tiger, as some people would put it. Um, I've done the pupil, and now I'm going to shade this iris. Now this upper part of the iris, first of all there is a shadow area under the eyelid, if you want to call that an eyelid. And then there is a lighter area, almost like a catch light, like a reflection in the upper part of the eyeball. But it's not completely white. So it's it's a little bit subdued, and then the rest of the eyeball is a little bit darker. Now I'm working on the ears. I put in some of those white lines or indentations, but I also added some areas of darker value on top of that. Around the edge of the ear, there are some darker hairs as well, so I'm going to take away a little bit of value from the background so that the ear would stand out because the edge is uh, covered with darker fur. And I'm using a pencil eraser to add a few more of those white lines and make them appear a little bit softer and more dense. Now I'm using a tortillion to refine the texture of the fur a little bit by going over those darker areas and also using the charcoal on the tortillion to push that in into those lighter areas to create some softer marks. Another way you can do that is by using vine charcoal. So if you want to create, if you don't want to create darker lines which will leave too much texture and which will be difficult to erase or modify, you can use vine charcoal. Uh, that's probably a better choice for these lighter areas. So, um, in addition to these darker patches, patches of darker fur that look like stripes or spots, depending on their shape, uh, the tiger has some ochre or ochreish um, areas of fur, in addition to the lighter ones, the white ones. And my challenge here, because I'm doing a black and white drawing, will be to uh, create a sufficient range of value and also a sufficient amount of contrast so that you can distinguish between those 
white portions of the tiger's fur and those ochre portions of the tiger fur. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to make it clear to the viewer where the, where the white areas end and where the ochre areas begin. And it won't be very, it won't be that easy because like I said this is a black and white drawing plus there are many other shadows and um, details on the texture so it's not that easy to show that contrast. But you can see that here I'm using a pencil eraser to make these parts of the fur a little bit lighter but also to make them look a little bit more complex so I'm adding a little bit more, a little bit more texture to them. And I'm also going over some of these darker stripes and refining their shape as well as adding a bit more value. Notice how uh, their shape is very irregular because I want to make it look like fur and how here and there they're interrupted by lighter hairs. Whenever I draw animals that have some they have a fur coat of any kind. I always stress that you need to remember two things. You need to pay attention to the direction of the fur and the length of the fur. Meaning that the strokes of your pencil or your eraser, depending on whatever it is that you're using at the moment, need to match the length and the direction of the fur. So if the fur is a little bit shorter your strokes need to be shorter and that will be the case around the forehead and the nose area on the tiger. And the nose area has some very very short hair. And also the area that is around the eyes. But as you move further away from that center of the face the hair kind of gets longer and longer. It gets very long around these uh, sides of the face or cheeks. And then it gets even longer around the neck. I'm going to move on to the other eye. The woodless charcoal pencils I'm using are Morrison woodless charcoal pencils and the eraser in a pencil that I'm using is a Kohinoor eraser in a pencil. These are some of the things that work for me. Naturally you can use any other brand. I just tend to use whatever I find locally. So whatever is available in my country I tend to buy that. I don't worry too much about whether there are some other better materials abroad because I think that regardless of which pencil or which tool you're using you're still going to have to go through a period of that adaptation and you always have to take the time to get to know your tools and get used to them. Naturally if they're high quality it will probably be easier for you to get used to them but that doesn't mean that you can't create some nice looking drawings with some cheaper materials. Now you can see how I'm actually creating these ochre areas by uh, using the charcoal from, the, from those darker stripes and just pushing it around with a brush and creating contrast between the lighter white areas and the ochre areas. So here's the nose, a couple of these large nostrils and then the tip of the nose is a little bit darker with a few of these darker spots and then the fur in between the eyes and on the nose is going to be very very short. So let me just explain briefly uh, how I'm going to try to imitate the texture here. Uh, one thing I can do is try to create some very very short strokes, maybe like a millimeter or a couple of millimeter long. But another way that you can do this 
because this is obviously taking quite a bit of time and is a little bit tedious. Another way you can do this is you can hold the pencil sideways and let it drag across the paper and that way it kind of uh, spontaneously or unintentionally generates some kind of a texture. And that texture can be used because it kind of looks like short fur. So you can see that that is what I'm doing now. I'm just dragging my pencil. And it's usually a good idea to use a combination of both. You can use a combination of these short strokes and the dragging the dragging motion. I'm using a tortillion to add some marks in these lighter areas because I want to avoid using a charcoal pencil there. These are a lot lighter but also far softer and that's what I want. I don't want them to stand out too much or to have a sharp edge. Uh, don't worry if the eyes aren't perfectly symmetrical or anything. They never are and I can always modify things a little bit uh, but I'm going to do that once I get close to finishing this drawing. So this was a fairly long drawing process and it's a, it's going to be a, sli a slightly longer video, 40 plus minutes. But the real time video uh, would probably be around three and a half, four hours. So it took a bit of time for me to, to draw this. This is a very complex drawing. I thought that it would be a little bit faster but I guess I underestimated it a little bit. Uh, but it was fun, or at least uh, most of it was. Although sometimes drawing the texture, especially this short fur around the nose, can be a little bit tiresome. And if you want to see real-time footage and longer full-length narrated videos, you should check out my Patreon. I have dozens of real-time and full-length narrated videos. You can observe my drawing process in real time, you can draw along, you can benefit from hearing some additional advice and explanations about the drawing process. If not, you can just check out some of my other videos because, because I have lots of drawings of wildlife as well as portraits, landscapes, etc. So don't forget to subscribe and also don't forget to give me a like and comment because that helps my channel grow. You can also click the notification icon uh, and that way you won't miss any of the future videos. Now pay attention to what I'm doing here around the sides of the, the nose. I'm adding some more and more of these uh, short hairs to make the sides of the, uh, the nose a little bit darker because the nose is a three-dimensional object that's kind of sticking out towards the viewer and I need to make the sides darker in order to make it pop out towards the viewer. And right now I'm using a pencil eraser to draw some of the highlights on the hair. Uh, but I also decided to make the top of the head a little bit dar darker and a little bit more textured. So I'm basically going over the areas which I've already done and refining the texture which is what I'm doing here on the nose now. Now I'm using a pencil eraser to add some highlights or lighter hairs to this nose area and um, I am taking, uh, taking away a tiny bit of value but overall uh, it, the, the area of fur looks a little bit darker than these lighter areas. This is what I wanted to achieve. I wanted a nice contrast between those ochre areas and the white areas. I wanted the, the viewer to be able to understand that these are patches of darker fur in comparison to the lighter white, white fur around it. Here around the mouth there is also an area of darker fur but I'm quickly moving on to the rest of the jaw and as you can see these white lines are already starting to pop out that's because I drew those lines those indentations using a pointed stick if you don't have a pointed stick or if you're uncomfortable using that you can also use a, that thing for decorating nails that works really well 
But for this technique, or any other technique for that matter, I always recommend stronger, thicker paper, and this paper is about 190 GSM. Uh, it's a Helios uh, drawing paper. It's nothing special in terms of quality, but it's actually pretty thick and durable, which is why I like it, because my techniques are usually such that the paper is required to take a little bit of abuse. I like softening some of these darker lines with the tutelian. It makes them look a little bit more realistic. It makes the fur look more realistic, softer, more voluminous, etc. And another thing that you see me doing is I'm using a brush to push around this excess charcoal powder or charcoal dust. And that way I'm shading the shadow areas of this white fur. Because the white fur can't remain completely white because otherwise the animal would look flat, like it has no volume or depth. And also these whiskers wouldn't stand out. In order for them to stand out, they need to stand out against a slightly, at least a slightly darker background, if not a much darker background. So even these white areas are going to be in the shadow and they're going to be considerably darker than the white, white areas. Which is why I added a bit more value there. And now these whiskers stand out a bit more and you're also starting to get some idea about the shape and the volume of the tiger's head. There are quite a number of these uh, darker spots around the nose area and the jaw area. So I'm putting those in, making sure that my, de uh, my drawing is as detailed as possible. and I'm still trying to clean up these whiskers a little bit. Now normally when you draw white hair and white beard you wouldn't want to work around it with pencils because that would kind of defeat the purpose of your uh, erasing process. But here because we have just a few of these lighter hairs and they have a very clean edge in comparison to the, to the rest of the, uh, the tiger's head um, it's actually not a bad idea to use a pencil and work around them a little bit. As long as you no, don't overdo it, it should be fine. Uh, this chin area has a bit of a lighter but longer hair, like, almost like a goatee. And I also added some of those flyaway longer white hairs using that pointed stick technique. And now there are some smaller spots or patches of darker fur, almost sort of radiating from the mouth downwards. And I really like the tiger's expression in this in this photo looks very attentive, almost like it's focused on a potential prey. I'm working around the, uh, around the whiskers a little bit and adding a bit more value in some areas around the tiger's head so that it would stand out more against the background. I'm using my pencil eraser to add a bit more here to those white areas. So drawing those invisible lines is not enough, or it's usually not enough, to create a convincing looking fur. Uh, sometimes you can also use a gel pen to go over the whiskers if you want to create them that way. Normally I like to use reserve the white space for the for the whiskers. I prefer that rather than using a white gel pen or some other white pen because it's tr it just looks better. I, I found that um, these gel pens usually don't combine that well with most of the dry media, especially graphite in my opinion, but with charcoal they tend to work as long as you know their limitations and as long as you um, as long as you um, know how your tools work and as long as you use them sparingly. 
Anyway, I'm moving on to the right side of the face and adding some darker lines there. Um, doing basically the same thing that I did on the other side, starting from these darker stripes and spots, from these darker patches of fur, and then I'm going to take it from there. They don't have to be exactly symmetrical. They can vary a little bit in terms of shape, and they, I don't think they ever are entirely symmetrical. In fact, trying to make them completely symmetrical would probably uh, ruin the drawing in, in the sense that it would make it too symmetrical and kind of unconvincing, unrealistic. This way it looks a little more natural and organic. I've moved on to the body here, to the, to the lower part of the body, below the neck. We're already moving uh, closer to the chest and the shoulder area. And some of these stripes are going to be kind of uh, bending slightly because they're following the shape of the body. So I want to make the fur look um, a little more realistic as it's twisting around the tiger's body. I want to create some contrast so that I can finish the right side of the tiger's body. And I can't really shade it or I can't really gauge how much value I need there before I put down a little bit of charcoal on the right side. So again I used a bit of charcoal powder created from sharpening and put that in. Right now I'm not too worried about the details in the background, not that the background will have too many details. I want to make it blurry eventually but uh, at this stage I just put in that background to be able to keep working on the, on the tiger's fur on the right side. Out of those larger portraits that I've done, animal portraits, I think uh, this is one of the most complex, most complex ones. And when I say larger portraits, I mean it's larger because it's covering most of the paper. Um, not that the paper size is too large, uh, but uh, my drawing of a wolf was also fairly large and complex. I normally like to work on this format for YouTube videos. Sometimes I do larger drawings but that doesn't happen that often. I could also have done this in color and I think it would have been an interesting drawing. But I wanted to do one in charcoal. I haven't done a black and white drawing of tiger in a while, I think. Uh, I, I've done one of a sitting tiger back in 2014, maybe early 2015. Uh, that was one of my favorite drawings at the time. And I gave that one to my sister, who likes cats, even big wild cats. So here on the sides of the body, we have some of those ochre areas, darker areas, and I'm going to draw, draw those by putting down the medium charcoal pencil strokes first. Now right now they don't look like much because uh, they need to be blended in. Once I blend them, they will become a lot softer and quite a bit more realistic. But I still need to work over them a little bit with a pencil eraser to draw a highlight or two. 
to make everything a bit more realistic. But you can see now how I achieved a nice contrast between the lighter fur and the darker fur. And that's ultimately what's important to me. And another thing that I'll kind of push myself to remember is that those areas of light of her aren't all the same. Because some of them are going to be almost completely white and others will be quite a bit darker. If I don't shade them in such a manner, the tiger will end up looking kind of flat. The drawing will be too simple. I'm doing a bit more work with the medium charcoal pencil, adding some lighter strokes in this area where the fur is lighter. Because in this part of the tiger's body, I have some longer fur and quite a bit more texture. So I'm going to try to imitate that with my pencil. Because remember what I said, that you have to imitate the, the appearance of the texture by making sure that your, the length of your strokes, not just the direction of your strokes, matches the, the length of the, and the direction of the fur. And when you're using a pencil eraser, like I'm doing now, you have to do the same thing that you're doing with a pencil, because uh, basically you're using it as a drawing tool. You draw darker lines and darker shapes with a charcoal pencil and lighter lines and lighter shapes with a pencil eraser. And when you're drawing lighter fur or highlights in the fur, uh, you have to remember the same principles. So the length of your strokes, the length of your, uh, the strokes of your eraser need to match the length of the fur. Notice how I'm using a brush here to shade some of those dark gray areas simply by pushing some charcoal over them. I don't really have to do much work. I just push a little bit of charcoal into those shadow areas and uh, I create a more three-dimensional look to my main subject. You can see how much longer the fur appears here in this lower area below the neck and I want it that way because uh, Obviously the length of the fur on the animal varies quite a bit depending on the position. And here around the neck and below the neck it's uh, quite a bit longer in that chest area. But I'm making good progress with my drawing as you can see and uh, I'm slowly moving on to the final portion of the tiger's fur that I need to finish, which is in the lower right corner. Notice how the position of the stripes is a little different here because the body is twisting a little bit to the side. Now I'm going to try to add a few details on the background a little bit to, to make it a little bit more interesting. Uh, but I hope that I won't make it too distracting. So I'm going to try to make everything look pretty blurry and out of focus. Uh, like maybe some suggestions of trees, like the, the tiger is in the forest or jungle. And um, I'm also going to create those lighter areas where maybe a little bit more light is breaking through, through the canopies and through the branches. There are a number of ways I can do that. I can dab it a little bit with a paper towel or I can dab it with a kneaded eraser. Maybe I can even draw some of the lighter areas with my kneaded eraser. I'm going to play around with that a little bit to see uh, which works best until I can create some sort of an out of focus background that uh, will provide a little bit of context for this tiger, but at the same time won't be too distracting so that it uh, ruins the appearance of the whole drawing. 
Here I decided to rework this nose area and some parts of the face because I felt that they needed a little bit more value. And the reason why I felt they needed more value is because I simply thought that the background is a little bit too dark and it's kind of swallowing my main subject and I don't like that. I wanted to have more shape and volume and uh, when the background is a little bit too dark and kind of it kind of when it interacts with areas of lighter value it kind of makes it difficult for the viewer to uh, to uh, perceive that uh, range of value in the main subject so I needed to push uh, the range of value on my main subject as well and create some even darker areas especially around the center of the portrait and that way hopefully my main subject will be uh, a lot more um, conspicuous in the sense that it will draw, uh, it'll draw focus of the viewer immediately when you look at the drawing and that's what I want. So I kind of blurred the background as much as I could because like I said, I want a blurry out of focus background, or bookie background, as some artists would put it. And here I'm moving on to the right side of the head by drawing some of these longer flyaway hairs on the side of the head. And notice how I'm varying the direction a little bit because I want them to overlap in different angles so that the fur would look realistic and organic uh, but it's a little bit lighter than the fur on the left side so I'm, need to, uh, I'm gonna need to um, go over it a little bit with a brush to add a little bit more value to it and, but other than that I'm pretty happy with the way the head looks so I just need to do a little bit more work on the rest of the body and then my drawing will be done. I'm also cleaning up those uh, whiskers a little bit and adding some more value to the background on the sides because I want the rest of the body to stand out. So I needed a little, a little bit more contrast there. And now I'm putting in those shorter strokes uh, where the where those where those areas of ochreish fur are, so this is slightly darker fur, so I'm doing the same thing I did on the left side of the body, making that part of the body a little bit darker, going over it with my blending tools, and then later I go in with the, with the erasers to draw some of the highlights or areas of lighter value, and to refine the appearance and the texture of the fur, make it a little bit more realistic and fluffier at the same time and maybe to emphasize the contrast between those uh, darker stripes and the lighter areas. And I'm also using my uh, soft charcoal pencil to go back in uh, and rework some of those darker stripes, add a little bit more value to them. Uh, and I, uh, as I always stress, I like to use the soft charcoal pencil a little bit sparingly, I guess, because that way um, it, it just uh, has uh, a greater effect on how you perceive the shape and the volume of the, of the main subject. I'm softening the texture a little bit with a brush here and there and uh, putting down some finishing touches, making sure that the drawing looks nice and clean and finished. Some parts of it are a little bit are a little bit messy, but it's wildlife, and I'm drawing fur, and it doesn't have to be perfect. And um, I'm just working around some of these whiskers, trying to add a little bit more contrast and make them stand out a little bit more and to uh, create a slightly cleaner edge. I put my signature in the lower right corner but 
I'm just going to do a little bit more work. I want to refine the appearance of the nose a little bit. This area was a little bit too light, so I added a bit of added a bit of value and a bit of texture to imitate that really really short fur which is close to the nose area. So I think that now it looks a lot better because the it was a little bit too light. And also uh, the uh, the eyes weren't quite symmetrical, so I made some adjustments to those as well, and maybe to the sides of the head. Just a few minor adjustments, so that the animal would appear a little bit more symmetrical, even though it doesn't have to be 100% symmetrical. Uh, but the drawing here is finished. And I hope you enjoyed the drawing process. Don't forget to check out my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. If you want to see longer videos, as I already mentioned, check out my Patreon. I want to thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. That will be all. Bye for now.